Hey what's up guys, Matt here. Today I'll be reviewing the Air New Zealand 767 300ER in the Lord of the Rings Aragorn livery by JC Wings in a 1 to 200 scale. Please check the description in case you missed anything throughout this video. All of my social media links will be down there. Um, I'm not sure where I pre-ordered this model from. Um, I bought it online somewhere. Um, I've done plenty of um, backtracking through my history, many different websites, also my email, everything and I cannot find where I got this from, um, which is surprising to me. So um, I cannot give you where I bought it, but um, you uh, you guys typically know where I get my models anyway, so you might be able to find it there if you want to get it. This is my six, uh, 767 model, and it's my 22nd Air New Zealand model. Some information about Air New Zealand. Their operations base is out of Wynyard Quarter in Auckland, New Zealand. Main hubs are Auckland International Airport, Christchurch International Airport, and Wellington International Airport. Focus cities are Los Angeles International Airport and Sydney Kingsford Smith. They were founded on the 26th of April 1940 as TEL, which is uh, sorry, Tasman Empire Airways Limited, and they commenced operations on the 1st of April 1965 as Air New Zealand. The fleet. Um, in New Zealand's fleet, as of the 14th of January 2019, consists of 115 aircraft. Air New Zealand did used to operate a total of 22 767s over about 32 years. Uh, 10 of these were 767 200s and 12 were 767 300s. The last Air New Zealand 767 operated from Sydney to Auckland on the 31st of March 2017 with the registration ZK. NCI. I flew on that aircraft on that last flight. I will leave a link to, uh, sorry, in the description to that video if you wish to check it out. Um, quite a sad day, uh, especially if you grew up around here in New Zealand and all that stuff. Um, yeah, it was, it was it's coming up two years now, so um, time just flies by, really. In New Zealand serves 51 destinations. They operate the 767s from New Zealand to Australia, throughout the Pacific Islands, Southeast and East Asia, and North America. This aircraft's first flight was on the 28th of July 1993, and delivered to Air New Zealand on the 11th of August 1993. It was withdrawn from use on the 25th of March 2017, and stored at Alice, <coughs> Alice Springs up until the 28th of August 2018. The aircraft was then ferried to Tel Aviv to undergo cargo uh, conversion by Israel Aerospace Industries and is now owned by Cargo Aircraft Management. The Boeing customer code for Air New Zealand is 19. Let's take a look around the box. So it's a very nice box this one. So at the top we got the two characters that are featured on this model from the movie. Airline to Middle Earth, that was the slogan back when in New Zealand uh, flew these liveried aircraft. In New Zealand 767-300. And this livery is inspired by the Return of the King uh, movie in the trilogy. On the back of the box, we have, well we don't have much, I should say, uh, just the warnings as standard. On the top and to the bottom. Now, um, I want to do a. Probably should mention this at the start. I want to do a video where I showcase my equipment, my camera equipment, just to show you guys what I use. And you know, if you want to, if you're interested in using the same equipment as I do, if you want to start producing videos or you you just want to change your equipment, um, I want to do a video on it. Um, and you know just let me go let, let me know what you think if I, if I should do it or not but I, I want to um and it might be difficult to not not show myself my my face and all that in the video so you may for the first time be able to see my face um but just let me know if you want to the, the point of it is it isn't to, isn't for a face reveal it just so happens that it might happen to be a face reveal but let, let me know if you want to see the type of video Anyway, there we have the model, the stand, inside the box. 
All right guys, the model is now out of the box and we are gonna start at the cockpit windows on the port side. Now you notice straight away that obviously the, the nose gear is not sitting on the ground. That is uh, obviously due to the tail being quite heavy. Um, so I cannot help that at this point, uh, but it shouldn't make too much difference. It's not like it's leaning on, um, on the fuselage or anything. It's only, it's only uh, just fully resting on the main gears. Anyway, let's get into this. This uh, so we're at the um, near the cockpit windows on the port side. So we have the Starlines logo, cockpit windows, window wipers, Peter tubes, static ports. Um, so this, uh, if you didn't know already, in New Zealand is a member of Star Alliance, which is a group of 27 airlines. Uh, we also have the regist part of the registration number on the gear door CG. In New Zealand titles. Airline to Middle Earth um, slogan, the inboard landing light, and the engines. So these engines are the General Electric CF6-80C2B6 power plants. Taking a look inside, I probably don't even need to turn this light on that I have. There's plenty of light going into that engine. Um, fan blades, they don't spin. Ooh. Didn't expect that to happen. Uh, so the, no, they don't spin, which is a shame. We have the engine strake. And then the same on this side. Let's see if this spins. No, that also doesn't spin. But we do have the engine strike. And I do, I do like how they have polished the uh, inlet of the engine, which is very nice, very accurate re uh, representation of the aircraft. All right, now continuing along the wing, we come to the Red navigation light, strobe light. We'll just go back onto the fuselage here. So, bring it around here so it's easy to see. So the nice um, design around it, uh, in the background of course the, the snowy mountains, so those would be the Southern Alps in New Zealand. Um, that's the Alpine range, it stretches for most of the distance of the South Island. Um, which is the area where the movies were filmed. So, um, of course, this one's called the Aragorn Livery, or you could call it the uh, the Return of the King Livery, whichever one. But the characters that you can see, um, so there's Aragorn, of course, that's played by Viggo Mortensen, and then Arwen, that's played by Liv Tyler. Now, this livery was painted in January of 2003 to promote New Zealand and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It was eventually repainted into the Pacific Wave livery in mid-2004. We then have the Lord of the Rings logo and the movie companies and all that kind of stuff uh, who they're associated with. Rare um, Bogbindor and New Zealand flag because and New Zealand is the flag carrier for New Zealand. ZK NCG, uh, the registration number, Zulu Kilo November Charlie Golf. And then my favourite in New Zealand logo, the uh, the mix of the um, the blue and the green uh, with the uh, the nice coru. The APU section, we have the APU exhaust. It's not completely center, but it is okay. It's, it's decently detailed. All right, so now to the cockpit windows on the starboard side. Again, Starlines logo, Peter Tube Static Ports, part of the registration on the gear door. 
and New Zealand titles, front cargo container door. On this engine, which we didn't have on the other engine, is the General Electric logo. I'm not sure how accurate that is, if there is meant to be one on the other side. Um, when this uh, aircraft was in service or not, um, I don't actually know. But it's good to see they have it. Now the green navigation light on this wing as well as the strobe light. And back onto the fuselage. Again, we have the livery being reversed on the side. The rear cargo container door, Lord of the Rings logo, registration number, New Zealand flag, and the Koru on the tail. Okay, so let's take a look around the aircraft now. Or I should say beneath the aircraft. Okay, so we have the nose gear gear door, an antenna, another antenna, a couple of NACA ducts, anti-collision beacon, main gear and gear doors, I should say main gears, not gear, um, hole for the stand, underneath the wings, it's quite detailed, flaps, slats, ailerons, we have the fuel dump valve right next to the aileron, uh, outboard aileron I mean. Underneath the engine, it's quite detailed. So there's, um, on the starboard engine, number two engine, we have the logo on the inside of the, of the uh, engine, but you see we don't have it on this engine here, so there is no, so unless this was printed incorrectly, like it's meant to be one on each engine, um, I, I don't actually know if it's correct or not, so I have to just believe that it's correct, because usually it's correct. Same underneath this wing, but with the registration number. Continuing down, we have another antenna. One more. We have the tail skid and the APU housing. Taking a look on top of the aircraft now. Anti-collision beacon, lots of markings for antennas. We do have one antenna there. ADF antennas. On top of the wings, flap slats, ailerons, and spoilers, as well as those no step markings. And the same on this wing here. And continuing down, we come to the horizontal stabilizers where we have couple of grey dots near the leading edges on each one and they are the logo lights that light up the tail at night time. So some of the features of this model now, landing gear, all but maybe four of the wheels roll so it's a bit of a shame tilts mostly as you can see the the gear on the other side the wheels the the front wheels aren't sitting on the ground so you can see the indication that that one doesn't really tilt much i mean it barely tilts a millimeter in any direction so it's a bit of a shame nose gear does swivel oops those wheels uh they're not, it's not broken or anything, they just sort of push back on, it's just the way I turn it. Um, I've never actually had that before with previous 767s. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just leave it for now, because it's going to take too long. But it does swivel, um, as you know, so it's not going to rest on there anyway. I guess that sort of just highlights the problems that I've had with the gears in this video. Then again, I, I can't really say if it's just my model or not, or if it's, if it's uh, this, this batch, um, because I haven't reviewed a 767 since 
2015 I believe United was the last one anyway so here we have the stand so it's the old wooden base with the plaque Air New Zealand 767-300 scale 1 to 200 bottoms nothing there we have the blue film I just removed that right now Nice shiny metal back of the stand. On the top we have the padding so you don't scratch them all underneath. Now unfortunately with all the gear problems I've had there are no gear doors but 767 the, the moulds have never had um, uh, removable, removable magnetic gears so it's not like it's a surprise really I did mean to show you this uh, I forgot I can show you now and this is no problem we have landing and taxi lights on the gear so that is pretty cool to see that some um, details I always like to see with my models Anyway, guys, this will be about it for this uh, review. I do hope you have enjoyed. This obviously complements my Air New Zealand collection perfectly. As an avid uh, lover of Air New Zealand, um, I aim to get every single model I can of Air New Zealand. It's a fantastic uh, aircraft. I think it would go well in any collection. 767 is obviously one of my favourites, uh, the favourite of a lot of other people as well. So I think it's a good ad addition to your collection, well, it definitely would be a good addition to uh, any collection, I would, I would think. Um, it's just a fantastic aircraft and uh, the delivery is just so, you know, immaculate, so, so nice. So um, I do hope you have enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, all that uh, jazz. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.